Hello and welcome to LFC Focus. We've got a jam-packed new show for you today. There's plenty of stuff to come up. We've got updates on the Fakir transfer saga, plenty of stuff on Liverpool starting their pre-season training today and all sorts of transfer rumours to get through. But we're going to start off with the biggest news of the day. It broke at 8 o'clock this morning. Liverpool fans were surprised and joyous to find out that Mohamed Salah has agreed a new five-year deal at the club. In terms of, you know, details, details around it. All we've really got is the fact that it will keep him at the club, provided he doesn't leave on a, on a transfer or anything like that, until the year 2023. There is no release clause whatsoever, which I think is a very, very smart move from Liverpool. However, we do not know the exact wage that we've got. And that kind of makes sense because, you know, there's always going to be different figures reported. Agents are going to say one thing and the club are going to say another. But it seems fairly clear that he is in that very top wage bracket with players like Firmino and Van Dijk in among the highest earners at the club at the moment. So yeah, I think it's very, very fantastic news. It sends out some very positive messages as well. First of all, it says that he's not for sale. I mean, I couldn't really see that happening at all this summer, but it also suggests that he's not for sale for the foreseeable future. Now, obviously, people are going to be cynical and point out things like the Suarez deal and the uh, the Coutinho deal. Both of them signed new contracts about six months before they left the club, but both of those had mitigating circumstances as well. You know, Suarez is, had a release clause because it was effectively accepted that he was going to go to Barcelona. Coutinho signed his before the Barcelona interest popped up, and it was kind of, you know, special circumstances there where it was the only club he was ever going to leave. Liverpool for because he had that emotional connection to them. That doesn't really exist with Mo Salah in any other club and there hasn't really been any concrete talk of him moving away. Certainly sounds like he's very happy at Liverpool so I hope and I believe as well that this contract doesn't just represent an attempt to drive up any future transfer fee but an actual sign that the player is going to be staying at Liverpool for the long term which is absolutely fantastic. That's a great message to send out. The other message that it puts out as well and I think this is incredibly important when you consider the players that Liverpool are going to try and sign over over the next few transfer windows. It says that, you know, if you come to Liverpool and you have a brilliant season, if you prove yourself and show that you're even better than the player you were before you signed for the club, you'll be rewarded for it as well. And I think that's hugely important because if someone looks to sign for Liverpool and then sees their wage bill and thinks, you know, actually, I'd quite like a little bit more and they maybe think about haggling or seeing what their other options are, seeing whether another club like a City or a United are going to be offering them a little bit more money. It says to them, if you can prove yourself, if you can prove that you're actually a level above what the club already think you're at, then you are going to get rewarded for it come the end of the season. I mean, Mo Salah was on, what, 70k a week or something like that when he first signed. He obviously stepped up a huge level when he joined the club and he's been massively rewarded for that. And I think that is hugely important going forward for Liverpool. I think it's also really good in that it means we're not going to get into a huge pickle over negotiations and things like that in the future because I think Liverpool have been stung one too many times in the past now by transfer negotiations. We saw with Emre Jan and Raheem Sterling that if you leave it a little bit too late it only takes one little hiccup or one little stumble in negotiations for things to very quickly snowball and get and move out of control very quickly you know with this deal if there had been a hiccup if Mo Salah or his agent had said no we want more we want higher wages or we want different appearance fees or anything like that if there was a little bit of a disagreement there's still plenty of time for things to be ironed out so I think this is representative of a new strategy from Liverpool and what I think is a very, very good one as well because it's not just about bringing in new players. It is about tying down the players you've already got as well. And speaking of which, something that is also very, very exciting is the fact that Sadio Mane is also apparently next on the agenda when it comes to these contracts. It was confirmed by, De well, confirmed by David Maddock of the Daily Mirror this morning. You'll be hearing more of him between now and the end of the video, I'm sure. But he confirmed that Mane is the next one lined up. He even suggested that a new five-year deal had been offered. So it'd be interesting to see that how that one pans out. I mean, it's possible that he's even signed the deal. I mean, it's unlikely that Salah signed this deal between now and when Egypt actually went out in the World Cup. I think it's highly likely that the deal was all agreed beforehand and then they just waited on the announcement until he was out of the World Cup so it didn't, you know, cause any distractions or anything like that. You know, you just don't want to get in the way of things like that. So I think now Senegal are out of the World Cup as well. It's possible that it could be literally days until we find out that Sadio Mane has signed a new contract. And I think it's highly likely that will be another five-year deal and hopefully in that top wage bracket as well. So I think it's important to remember here that maybe, and this is very much a maybe, don't lose your heads if you're worried that this might be the case. It's possible that this could impact Liverpool's transfer business and it could mean that maybe we bring in one fewer player than we might have liked to have done this summer. But I think 
like I said, it's as important to keep your current assets assets as it is to bring others in. So if that means, you know, sacrificing one extra signing, one extra squad player, so we can pay Salah and Mane and Firmino the top wages so that we can, can actually reward our players, I think in the long run, that will actually benefit Liverpool because obviously it means they'll stay at the club for longer. And like I said, it sends out the message that if you want to prove yourself for Liverpool, you will get the money in rewards if you do so. So next up, before we get into all the pre-season training news, a little bit of an update on Nabil Fakir. It was reported yesterday, I think it was, or the night before yesterday, that Fakir negotiations were back on the table, that Liverpool were returning into talks with Leon to try and get that deal over the line. Those rumours have since been crushed by Paul Joyce and David Maddock of the Mirror. Maddock obviously seems to have sources on the Fakir side of things. Paul Joyce seems to have his sources on the Liverpool side of things. So fairly respectable outlets on that front. It sounds very much like those reports that were suggested that Liverpool were going back into negotiations were completely false. Whether that is true remains to be seen, but it certainly seems like the club are very willing to make clear that they are not in any sort of negotiations at the moment. The reports from, uh, I think it was Maddock, also suggested that Liverpool will not be going into any negotiations for any players until the World Cup is over, which is a very interesting one because I think surely it makes sense that once a player is out of the World Cup, then you can go back into negotiations. I mean, it's possible that Liverpool are thinking we want to wait until everyone's out of the World Cup before assessing our options because there are signings out there that could be potential domino effect ones. So I think like Shakiri, for example, I don't think we sign him unless we've got Nabil Fakir or someone of Nabil Fakir's equivalent. So I think Liverpool probably wait until they've got all their options on the table before they can start planning a strategy. And until then, it's very much just up in the air, blue sky thinking, and we will eventually find out what's on Liverpool's mind at the moment. I mean, it's entirely possible that they are at negotiating tables, maybe not an, on an official level, maybe not the higher-ups talking to the higher-ups, but I certainly think agents up and down Europe are getting rung up because if the Fakir deal is falling through and these recent reports suggest that they are, then Liverpool are going to look for an alternative. I don't think they're going to look for someone exactly like Fakir, but I think they will be looking for someone to bolster their attacking options. So while they might not be entering formal negotiations, I'm sure there'll be plenty of talks going on in and around Europe of Liverpool just asking clubs and asking agents about their players, about their potential availability and whether or not it's worth showing a concrete interest. So certainly one to keep an eye on. I think it's one that will gather pace a lot once the World Cup's over. I think that's the same can be said for all transfer rumours at the moment. But it is, again, once again, very much a saga and certainly not one that is going to go away soon. So next up, pre-season training news. The players all returned. Well, I say all returned. 26 of them came back for pre-season training today. Obviously, everyone who's played any role in the World Cup will not be coming back for training yet. I think it's three weeks holiday they get once they finish. So if they've been knocked out the group stage, they get three weeks after that. If they have played internationals, which is the case with Van Dijk and Jorginho Van, Al Van Elden, obviously they weren't in the World Cup because Holland didn't qualify, but they did play international friendlies just before the World Cup in all the warm-up matches for the other teams. So they haven't actually reported for pre-season training yet, but I imagine they'll be back very, very soon. But three weeks seems to be the standard holiday time, so I think it's probably going to be two weeks or so before we see the likes of Sadio Mane and Mo Salah. But we have got 26 players, including some pretty big names as well. It was very nice to see Keita and Fabinho in Liverpool training strips at Millwood, meeting the manager and everything like that. I'm sure we all, you know, at least shed a little bit of a tear at the sight of Naby Keita finally hugging Jurgen Klopp, especially when you think about the amount of time this deal's actually taken to get over the line. Paul Joyce did a fantastic piece in the Times about how long Liverpool have actually been looking at Naby Keita. The first time we, we scouted him was the summer of 2014. The first time we wanted to sign him and actually, you know, inquired about him was summer of 2016. We then actually completed the deal in the summer of 2017 and now it's the summer of 2018 and we finally actually got the player so it clearly means a lot to Jurgen Klopp and you could tell just from that like that first official meeting I'm sure they've, they've had chats before and stuff like that but that first official meeting at Melwood meant a lot to the pair of them and it's just great to see these players and it is good as well that we've got these stars there straight away because sometimes the preseason games can take a while to get going when those players are filtering back from the World Cup and stuff like that so it's really exciting that we've got those two brand new signings to look forward to seeing. Elsewhere, some other faces that we've seen back at Melwood. Pepin Linders is back at Liverpool after a brief stint coaching at 
NEC Nimnogen or something like that. I'm not going to pretend to know the name. I haven't got it on my notes here. But he was coaching for a little bit. Didn't quite work out for him. He's now back at the club, which is fantastic news because we all know that Jurgen Klopp rates him highly. He was an important part of the backroom staff before he left. And it's reported that he will play an even more key role in the club now that he has returned. That's fantastic. Hopefully that works out. It'll be interesting to see whether or not that influences maybe the way Liverpool play, the way Jurgen Klopp coaches, the setup of his coaching staff or anything like that. One person who has not returned, very much interestingly, is Zelko Buvac. He has not been spotted. There are reports both from Dominic King of the Daily Mail and our friend Dave Maddock saying that not only is he not reported for training, but it is highly unlikely that that situation is actually going to get resolved. It is looking more and more likely now that Zelko Buvac is leaving the club for good, which is a shame. That's another one that, you know, I think time will tell just how much of an effect that has on the squad and on Jurgen Klopp as well. It's worth remembering that Jurgen Klopp for the first, I think, 16 or 17 years in management, always had Buvac on his side. And the last few games of the last season was the first time we actually saw Jurgen Klopp without his, his partner in crime, essentially, in that management duo. He's obviously still got Peter Kravitz. John Akterberg, still the goalie coach. We've now got Pepin Linders back at the club as well. So hopefully there won't be a huge hole there. It's worth mentioning that there's also talk that there will be no new coaching replacements. So Jurgen Klopp's not necessarily looking for a Buvac replacement for anything like that. So who knows how that could pan out it could affect Liverpool tactically or in terms of morale could affect Jurgen Klopp and you know how much he wants to stay at the club we don't know yet but certainly one to keep an eye on and if you ask me I'm a little bit disappointed because obviously you know if Buvac is the tactical brain Liverpool have made some pretty good tactical moves recently I think they're up there with the best in the league in terms of their tactics and the way they approach games so it is disappointing to see Buvac leave and I'm hoping that it doesn't have too much of an impact elsewhere like I said so many players have returned of those 26 there have been some very very interesting ones coming back Adam Bogdan hasn't returned he is going on loan to Hibernian and this is his final year of his Liverpool contract so that basically says that we are now free of Adam Bogdan without meaning to be rude to the fella I mean I think it's fair to say that it never quite worked out for Adam Bogdan at Liverpool things just haven't really gone his way his career rate never really got going and I think it's for the best that he doesn't play for Liverpool this season and hopefully you know I hope that he does get his career back on track I hope he has a great time at Hibernian and does prove himself and you never know he could be amazing he could be the next Manuel Neuer and Liverpool could sign him up to a 100k a week contract at the end of the season you just never know other players that have been in Interesting sharp. Loris Karras is back as well. There's been a lot of talk about how the, the staff and specifically the goalkeeping coach, John Akterberg, will be very interested in what his mental state is. I think that could affect Liverpool's goalkeeping transfer plans. If it looks like those Champions League final mistakes are still affecting him in any way, then I'm sure Liverpool will accelerate those plans to look at a new goalkeeper come the end of the World Cup. Obviously, Alisson still apparently the number one. We've been linked with plenty of goalkeepers today. I can't really go through all of them, but Schmeichel has been one obviously had some fantastic heroics for Denmark last night despite being on the losing side he saved one penalty in extra time and two during the shootout as well we've been linked with Subasic as well who is the Croatian goalkeeper who saved I think it was two penalties in the shootout last night as well and has been fairly decent for them so far so Every goalkeeper under the sun is still being linked with Liverpool. That talk is not going to go away between now and the end of the season. But it will be interesting to see not just, you know, what comes out of the club about Loris Karius, but also how he performs because I'm sure he will get plenty of games during this pre-season run. But yeah, Loris Karius is going to be an interesting one. Daniel Sturridge has reported back for training as well. However, there are reports from the Turkish end of things that Besiktas are willing to pay £9 million for him. That's not Liverpool's valuation and that could rep potentially represent a crucial stumbling block in it. Liverpool still want 15 million quid for the player. Initially, Besiktas were only interested in a loan, but apparently if Liverpool are willing to drop to that £9 million valuation, then they might be interested in buying him on a permanent deal. I think if previous deals like this have been anything to go by, you know, the way we, we sold Brad Smith and Jordan Ibe and Christian Benteke as well, just because a player doesn't have a future at Liverpool, just because they now aren't seen as a potential future part of the first team, does not mean that Liverpool are going to give in to another club's demands on transfer fees. Even though Benteke, you know, didn't exactly improve at Liverpool and he clearly didn't have a future at the club under Jurgen Klopp, we still made sure we got about as much as we possibly could for him and made sure we didn't really make a loss on his transfer fee at all. I think 
think that's going to be the same with Daniel Sturridge. I can't see us budging any more than maybe two or three million on that transfer fee. So it remains to be seen whether Besiktas will actually go for that. There is a problem, I think, there in terms of a lack of suitors. I think a lot of Premier League clubs, first of all, have been turned off by his injury record. It's very well known in England. His loan move to West Brom was a little bit of a disaster on that front. So... I think Besiktas are one of very few clubs that will be interesting. Daniel Sturridge. I think he's certainly going to move abroad if he does leave the club this summer. I'm just hoping that they do really want him and that that 9 million offer at the start is just an attempt to maybe drive the price down just a little bit. Other transfer news. Liverpool have completed the signing of Chelsea midfielder Isaac Christie Davies, one that's definitely gone under the radar here. Apparently he was out of contract at Chelsea, couldn't agree a future there. Seems very similar to the Dom Solanke situation in that he's effectively said, look, I'm not getting minutes here, I don't want to stay at the club. And he's looked at Liverpool and thought that's where I can get some opportunities. You know, while Dom Solanke hasn't necessarily hit, set the Premier League alight or anything like that at Liverpool this season, he's certainly had his opportunities. And you saw in that last game against Brighton that he's clearly developed and hopefully will continue to develop at the club. I think this is going to be a very interesting preseason for Dom Solanke but I think Isaac Christy Davies has obviously looked at that he apparently had a trial at the club as well towards the end of last season so he's clearly impressed the manager and stuff like that I think it's definitely one that he will start out in the under 23s because as a 20 year old midfielder without really any first team pedigree at this kind of level it's highly unlikely that he's going to break into that first team because while Dom Solanke was effectively Liverpool's second choice option we have got plenty of squad options in midfield not just the first choice players like Cater and Fabinho and probably Jordan Henderson as well. We've also got Ox to come back in. We've got Milner. We've got Van Alden. We've got Lalana. We're potentially bringing in more like Fakir or someone of that kind of player during this summer. So I think his options in the first team will be very, very much limited. And I also think we'll probably want to have more of a look at players like Woodburn and Harry Wilson if we're going to afford players opportunities in the centre of the park. But certainly an interesting one. And I think if Liverpool are willing to go to the trouble of bringing the player in, they must have some idea about his potential future at the club. So certainly one to keep an eye on if you're a fan of the under 23 games do let me know if he does well because I don't tend to watch them but you know maybe we'll see a little bit of him in pre-season we'll all be keeping an eye out for that another new goalkeeper news I forgot to mention this one it is being reported by Italian outlets that Mino Raiola has offered his client Gianluigi Donnarumma the AC Milan goalkeeper to Liverpool that's an interesting one. I mean, we've, there's been all sorts of Donnarumma links. It always feels like one that makes sense to, to journalists, if not to the clubs, in that he's always been angling for a move. He wants big money and stuff like that. He wants to move out of Italy and things like that. And Liverpool are always in the market for a goalkeeper because there's always questions about that, whether it's you know legitimate questions within the club or questions within the media and doubts about whether our players are going to do well. So it doesn't come as a huge surprise. I mean, it's very much a rumour. I don't think it's possibly true but uh, you never know it's possible I don't think Liverpool are really that interested in Donnarumma I think given how he is possibly available this summer and has been available for quite a while like I said he has been angling for a move away and Liverpool you know if they're in the market for a goalkeeper they would possibly be interested in the fact that there hasn't really been any concrete talk certainly not anything for the Liverpool side suggests to me that that's not going to happen and also the fact that Alisson is apparently Jurgen Klopp's top target and wouldn't probably cost that much more I think Donnarumma you're looking at about 60 to 70 70 million. Allison, you're probably looking at 70 to 80 million. And if Klopp really wants Allison and doesn't seem to care that much about Donnarumma, I can't really see that happening. But you never know. One to keep an eye on as well. Turkish outlets have also reported that uh, Liverpool are interested in Vida, the centre back who has been playing very well. I think it's fair to say for Croatia. He's also been playing alongside Dejan Lovren. So that one makes a little bit of sense there. It's reported in these Turkish newspapers that both Liverpool and Everton have been bidding for the player. It's reported that we have been bidding 15 million euros but Besiktas want closer to 20 million euros so you never know it's possible could be true could be not we'll find out soon but I think it would almost make sense especially if we're maybe looking to move on a Klavan or a Matip or those players are looking to move on themselves if we're bringing in someone who's already played alongside Lovren they'd probably be quite useful for a rotational option I'm not saying that he's going to be first team but if Van Dijk does get injured it makes sense to bring in someone who's played alongside Lovren before because you don't have to try and force a part and it doesn't upset the chemistry of the team too much there. So I think that one makes sense. It would also make sense in that I think we do need a little bit of bolstering the squad. 
I'm not entirely sure we do really need to sign a centre-back this summer because I think with Joe Gomez and with Matip and Clavan in the squad as well, they are all decent options. But if one of them does want to leave for first-team football or anything like that, then I think signing someone like Vida would make sense, especially off the back of what has been an impressive World Cup. And finally, Hakim Ziak or Ziek, or however you want to say it, the Moroccan player, has been pretty much confirmed that he is going to leave Ajax this summer. He's been mentioned in links with Liverpool, also with Arsenal, with Roma, with plenty of clubs who's being touted all over Europe. He is that kind of player that I think he kind of fits that Fakir mould but maybe isn't quite as developed yet. I think if he came in he wouldn't get as many first team op opportunities as Fakir would but certainly would be an interesting one and maybe if we did bring in a Fakir type player then he would be the backup to that. Maybe he's the alternative to Shakiri or something like that. It remains to be seen but the fact that he's been confirmed to, to be leaving Ajax this summer or pretty much dead on, nailed to be going, suggests that if he is going to join Liverpool, we might see something like that gather momentum very quickly. So one to keep an eye on there. But yeah, that is pretty much all the news for today. There's been plenty of stuff going on. I think I've covered everything. But yeah, the roundup is basically Salah new contract, which is ace. Pre-season training, which is exciting. We've got the big game against Chester on, I think it's Saturday, the 7th of uh, July. So keep an eye out for that. There'll be a little bit of content around that as well. The Fakir news as well, which is a little bit of a knock but it's going to keep on twisting and turning that one so don't get down if it's worried you and of course plenty of other transfer rumours as well so thank you guys very much for watching if you did enjoy this video why not give it a like if you're new around here as well hit that subscribe button there check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days as well you might notice there's a new logo and a new look for the channel let me know what you guys think of that as well don't forget to follow at LFC Focus TV on Twitter as well and I'll see you soon for hopefully some more news bye for now